Thank you for joining us today. I'm joined today by my guest, Emma Preston from Vico by Eurolink. Hi, Emma. How are you doing? I'm good, David. How are you? I'm very, very well, thank you. Um, and we were talking a little bit off camera about um, some of the topics of conversation that are floating around various different Facebook groups at the moment. So it seems quite timely that we're talking. Um, but choosing a, a CRM that suits your estate agency business um, and maybe even moving CRMs uh, is a very big decision for an agent to make. Uh, to put it into terms that an agent will definitely understand, we always talk about um, landlords not wanting to move between managing agents very often because they perceive the process to be very complicated. They don't want to miss payments and, they, and, and agents can, re that resonates with an agent. So as agents, we can understand that moving CRM to a new provider could be a complete headache if we don't get migration, data migration sorted, and a million other different questions that go through our heads. So um, let's talk about it from Vico's point of view and how helpful you guys are. Um, what are the sort of things that an agent needs to consider then um, when they are shopping around for a new CRM? Well, I think there's quite a lot to it. I mean, we know from our research that uh, people don't change CRMs very often. So you can imagine there are people moving house more often than that. Yeah. Um, so that's something. It, it is It is a nightmare at times. Data migration is never, ever straightforward. And the reason for that is because different softwares put different bits of information in different fields. So matching them up to cross them over can be quite a technical challenge. Um, so anyone who says that's going to be a simple process is lying to you, frankly, because it won't be. Um, something will crop up, but that... What you want is someone who's really experienced at doing it, who's quite used to that. So our process for data migration here is that we do test runs, two or three test runs, before we do the final one to go live. And the idea behind that is that you've got time to check it in a sandbox environment to make sure it's all right and everything's in the right place before you're running your business on the back of it. So that can hopefully make a big difference. So that's fundamentally, that's the first thing is, if you've got an experienced provider that you're moving to, don't worry so much about data migration, you're in safe hands. So that would be top on my list of making sure you're comfortable with that. But ask them, ask them what's the process, how are they going to do it, how they're going to approach it. And the other thing is looking at, I suppose, there are so many different CRMs out there. I mean, I can't remember what the last count was. I think it's over 40 now, property CRMs, property softwares. Um, and they're all variety of budgets. And it fundamentally depends on what you want from it. And I think that's a really important part of the research beforehand is to think about what exactly do you need it to do? Um, and I speak to a lot of people who've never asked themselves that question. And you just think, well, that's, that's, that, that's before you speak to any of us, work out what is it you need. Um, and I think you get, we have a lot of situations, there's so many add-ons as well into software where you can Hello. sign up to all this exciting stuff. And a lot of the time it will fix three problems and create six new ones. <laughs> so you've got to think about, well, how does it work with your customer journey? And is your software that you've currently are already able to do that or not? Or does it do some of it and not all of it? And that we find a lot of the time is that it's a case of saying, well, how much of that new service do you really need? Which is why we're quite careful with integrations because there are so many of them out there that actually sometimes it's a case of you don't need all of them and it can be too confusing. And then if you make it too difficult for agents to engage with a particular service, they just won't. So and, it's make it let's, easy. Let's face it. Um, I, I, I've seen another CRM provider over the years do a, a survey on exactly how much of a CRM an agent uses. And sometimes to have something with all those bells and whistles on that's fully integrated, that's great, that's the dream, that's the vision. But are your staff and your team actually going to end up using it? Um, Vico, your reputation within the marketplace is as an extremely safe pair of hands trusted by, by huge businesses and corporations to manage a lot of properties. Now, sales, Yes, your CRM will do that. But to find something that supports the letting, letting and management process um, 
so thoroughly the way that Vico does is rare. Um, and, and it's great to hear that feedback out there. Yes, it is. It's always exciting when people say nice things about you, obviously. <laughs> um, I mean, we, I mean, Euralink's been around for 30 years, so it is it is a very experienced pair of hands in terms of the way the product's been created and thought about and its structure and the way it works. And that's and that, I think, is because it started off as a property management client accounting software and grew from there. And although, um, yes, our front-end sales is, I think, comparable to, to many, and just as good as many, it excels at client accounting, it excels at property management, and it does it through automation. So that's the other key, is how much do you need your CR software to be offering an automated service rather than a manual operation? How much are yours? Do you, what do you want? What are your plans for the future? Are you planning on increasing your staff count? Are you plan or would you or are you planning on increasing your scope? And how does that work? And what what about we've got lettings agents who have been using our software for a long time who have now recently gone into block management, for example, and that's a whole different discipline, yeah. which luckily they're able to do within our system. But it's a whole different discipline. They've got to get their heads around. So. You're only able to increase scope like that if you've got an awful lot of the day-to-day -day being kept taken care of um, through automation. I think it's fair to say that automation, when, when it comes down to it, and we talk about um, prop tech supporting agents, if you want to scale your business, automation is the key to doing that because it's easy. I mean, one of the questions you asked was, do you want to increase your headcount? Do you want to decrease your headcount? Um, in terms of cost savings, everybody wants to decrease headcount. In terms of customer service, everybody wants to increase it. Um, but from a pure business perspective, the areas of our businesses that we wish to focus on and increase are those that employ dollar productive behavior, as they would say in, in Australia, but or pound productive over here. We want people that aren't just admin assistants. We want them out there actually adding value to the customers. Uh, enhancing customer service that's how we we work on customer retention and automation frees those people up to do that it's it's true it's always um i think mean, it's probably fair to say that the lettings and management side of our industry is the least sexy side of our industry which is why we always talk about sales but if you can get the automation in there to free up the admin wow it's a different world well yeah i mean it's the side of the business that brings puts the value on your business yeah. It's the bit that people want to buy. Um, so there's that to consider. Yeah, it does. It, and it always seems to be shoved into a back room, but it's actually, it's probably the most lucrative part of the business or certainly the most consistent. Um, yeah, and I think that's something that, that people forget actually is just how important lettings are. I think there've been quite a few, when times are hot, when times have been, we've had a great year, haven't we, as an industry. So when yeah. times are good, sales, fantastic, flagship, but when times are bad, lettings can save you. So that's worth bearing in mind. But um, but yes, automation is key. Automation is everything and it keeps you going and it keeps things on, a, on an even keel. And it can, you want it to be all of those repetitive, horrible time consuming tasks that you don't really want to think about. Um, you want that to be taken care of by your system, but you don't want it to look like it's being written by a robot. You want it to look like you. And I think that's the other thing. So part of our build is making sure that the automation, the communications we provide automatically are completely written by our clients. I mean, they, they sound like them. They are the way they approach themselves. So it's not like they're giving up the ability to uh, for that personal touch. Those communications seem personal. They're very carefully put together so they don't feel like they're losing control and they don't feel like it doesn't sound like them. It's... um. It's funny, sometimes, I mean, uh, with a CRM system, and I don't know why this is the case in the CRM world necessarily, it can also just be with all suppliers, they come on very sort of hot and heavy at the beginning of the relationship, um, when they're, they're, they're trying to convince you that it's the one to sign up to, um, and then you don't see them, um, or hear from them. Um, I know your philosophy is very different in terms of client support, but that's one of the questions that I would urge agents to ask is, you know, how easy is it to get hold of your, your support team? How regularly are they going to be in contact? What's my journey likely to look at? Because my business will change and evolve over the years. My needs will change. 
I just want to make sure that it's you're not just sort of dumping me in the deep end and then walking away. Absolutely, absolutely. That's something we take very seriously. So you, because if it's an accounts problem, you do not want to be waiting several hours for someone to get back to you. You need an answer right now. So we really are strong on that. But on top of that, even when there isn't necessarily a problem, um, they have they have Alice, our fantastic BDM, who goes out and sees them regularly. They have Dylan and Gemma and the customer success team who ring them regularly just to make sure that they're getting what they need out of the, the, the system. We know that nobody, nobody uses their, their CRM to 100% of its capability. They just don't. So what we do as part of our packages, we give them training days and consultancy days. So what they can do is they can use their training days to make sure that they're either topping up or learning new skills or helping with new starters or whatever it might be. Consultancy days is how has your business changed? What are you now doing? What else do you need it to do? So we do both of those annually. So they get those as a regular, regular thing as part of their deal. That's fantastic. And I, I, I did bump into... Dylan, I can't remember where it was. I think it was Catfest a couple of years ago. And um, he's just the ray of sunshine, that man. He can't be contained. He's, he's like, you know, very oh, happy yeah. person, man. I love that positivity. Everyone loves Dylan. He's, he's really, he's <laughs> an absolute asset to us. But, which is great. I mean, it's nice to have sort of a, a positive team there because sometimes dealing with CRM on a, on a, de- a day-to-day basis, yes, we need it to function as agents. We need it to help us support our marketing efforts. Um, and, you know, sometimes it, it's just, it's nice to have a, a friendly face around in order to, to help that. So I suppose you, your, in terms of your CRM, um, if an agent were looking at it today, um, is it suitable for only one type of business in terms of size or, really would it grow with that agent as their business grows great question oh it will definitely grow with them and we've got um, clients of all sizes from quite small operations like barton wyatt to uh to, to connell's group to um as well as as various block management companies as well so we've got the whole gamut of size of of uh, agencies within our group um it can do multi-brand it can do multi-region um, and yeah, and it will be able to incorporate all of that. It gives you the a landlord and tenant login page so they can get in and find all their information 24 seven without asking you. Um, it's got, you know, smartphone applications for negotiators on the road, and all the rest of it. So it'll do all the things that you would expect, some of which I think is probably quite a surprise for something that's for a company that's been around for 30 years. But that's what you get with the experience. It, it is know surprising. What you, you have got a few unique tricks up your sleeve. And, and one of them was um, is something that I think is, is the future, the way that people search for things. But voice search, for instance, you're able to, to have a, a helping task for, I think, Alexa that, that will allow people to search for properties in their area. Um, and if an agent weaponizes that, and I mean weaponize it because it's the next big thing, I think that's a superb marketing angle, as well as delivering customer service. It's it's brilliant. Absolutely. Voice search, we think, is going to be the next big thing. It's it's going to be huge. People are searching on their phones and just going dictate and asking a question and expecting the answer. So to have it tied up with your, when someone says, you know, what what lettings properties are available in this area, it's going to be the Vico client that comes up with the answer. So I think it's definitely strong, uh, strong, um, a thing for the future definitely and uh, we, we've talked about your your history I mean obviously your your link uh, again has a a long established pedigree in the industry uh, the reason I'm asking you this is that again uh, we we've seen with with some other very high profile outsourced letting services without naming them by name but those have fallen by the wayside there are a number of different uh, reasons for that, but agents will now, when looking at where to place their business, they're going to do a little bit more due diligence, or at least they should do, um, and, and to ensure, you know, is this company even going to be around in, in five, 10 years time? You know, are they going to grow with my business? And I suppose you, you've, you've got history to draw upon there in order to predict the future. Well, absolutely. I mean, the fact that, well, Connells have been using us for 30 years, 
Um, we've got many, many agents have been using us for all of their career, some of them. But um, and you just think, well, there's actually I've put it another way, 95% of the leads that come into our doors are ex-users saying, I've moved boss, I've moved job or I've set up my own agency. I'm an ex-user and I need to have FICO in my business. I need my power grids back. Yeah. And I hear that daily. And you just think, well, that that really sums it up about how this is something that people can have confidence in because people who've used it want it back. They don't want anything else. They're and not and it, it's, ro it's robust the way that it's built. You can't break it. it it's it's something no. that... <laughs> I think is, if you have tried, but it's not possible to do. <laughs> it's great. I had a demo of it. I've tried. So, you know, it's it, it's still the uh, David Mint challenge. It's... It's okay. So talk to us about an, an agent that is, you know, if, if there's any agents out there watching this now and they're shopping around for a CRM um, and all the headache that they think goes with that, where do they start, Emma? Um, what, what should they do when contacting you? What information will you need? Will you be, you know, what, what are the steps to onboard with, with you guys? We um, take onboarding very seriously. So it's quite a, a lengthy process, takes about 12 weeks. So we'd start off with, um, we just fundamentally need to know, we, we price it on unit numbers rather than users. So as your business grows and you increase your staff count, you're not going to be penalized for it. Um, and even if you increase offices, we're not going to charge you extra because you've got a second office or a third office or what have you. So it's all on unit numbers. So that's our most important criteria. So that's the first thing. Once we, um, once you've decided that you want to go ahead, then we you get assigned a consultant, and that consultant will run the project of your onboarding. They'll start with a scope meeting. They'll go through a, quite a lot of detail about what you need the system to do, because where Vico is different, it's not a plug and play software. Um, it's 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 got a, hef, a reasonably hefty implementation cost because, and it's worth it because what we do is we build it to you. So we look at what are your processes, what do you need it to do, and we will build your VECO and configure it to your processes, to what you're looking for. Um, and once we've got the scope and we've worked out exactly what that needs to be, we will build it. We will then um, start with, with your practice, your um, practice data migrations. We will also start your training and we will train all your staff into all the aspects of what they need to do and how it's going to work. And that, that process takes time. Um, and the data migration is probably the longest bit of it because of the amount of times we test it. And then when you go live, you're handed over to the customer success team and uh, and support. And that's fundamentally the process. It takes about three months. But that, That's so important because I think every lettings business or, or even sales business, but tends to be more idiosyncrasies in those lettings business, has its own personalities. They have their own comfort zones and the way that they've structured their processes to support their staff uh, and, and it suits them. And we spend years training our staff to manage properties one way. Um, and it seems counterintuitive to introduce a piece of software that forces you to train them a different way. Whereas with Vico, you'll come in, you'll take a look at the needs of the business and you'll say, okay, I understand that your process works like this. Um, instead of going ABC, you go ADC and that's fine. Um, we're going to build it to suit and support that journey. And, I, and I, to me, as a, as a manager of people and as a manager of properties, that's a huge relief <laughs> straight away because I don't need to, to reinvent the wheel. Um, anybody who's got staff that have been doing a job for a long time, it's hard enough to get them to do it the way you want. But then to say, hey, everybody, we're doing it a different way from tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. And, and we know in this industry, everyone does the same thing a bit differently. Yeah. And it's fundamentally about making sure software shouldn't reinvent their business. It should, it should complement what they're doing. Yeah. Make it easy. We're supposed to make it easier, right? That's what we're here for. I would hope so. I hope so. Well, that, <laughs> that's great. I and mean, that's sort of given us a, an overview of, of what that process of moving to Vico might be like. And, and guys, if you've never had a demo before, um, get in touch with Emma. All the of Vico's details are on uh, kerfuffle.com. Um, tremendous people to deal with, very friendly, um, but they've also got a product that has been tried and tested by some huge businesses over the years and relied upon. Uh, so we, we know that they're good for it. 
um, give them a go. Uh, it's been lovely talking to you, Emma. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Pleasure.